Hey, this is Doug Field along with my co-host Brent Macy, and welcome back to the segment Healthcare Consumers and Radio, where we're very pleased to have joining us a real friend of the Institute and uh, supporter of what we've been doing, and uh, Laura Carabella, the editor and publisher of Medical Travel and the principal of CPR Strategic Marketing. Laura, good morning. Good morning, sirs. Hey, great to have you on the program today. Delighted. Uh, Give our audience a little background on what you do in this medical travel space. You're one of the leading advocates and proponents and educators on this this whole movement. So, We have been publishing uh, Medical Travel Today, which is the international leading international newsletter in the medical travel space for nearly a decade. And that goes out to business-to-business -business professionals, physicians, hospital uh, executives, uh, employers, the whole marketplace. We reach about 35,000 people uh, several times a month with our newsletter worldwide. Uh, and at about four years ago, we learned that the domestic market, the U.S. domestic market, was equally interested uh, in medical travel, but from a different perspective. So we launched usdomestictravel.com. By the way, both newsletters are available uh, free free to anyone who wants to join us in this uh, great initiative, uh, and download uh, the past copies where we've been focusing on the employer, insurer, payer, and healthcare marketplace in the United States. Uh, the domestic market is particularly interesting because now employers have really embraced this concept and are traveling their employees from... Kansas to Missouri and New York to California and all over the globe, uh, all over the United States globe, I should, I should point out, to access better care, quality care at a reasonable price. Yeah, and, it, and as you and I have talked many times about the subject, it's, it's easier to get Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Peoria to fly to the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland than it is to get them to fly to Shanghai, China. For sure, but what's so interesting about this new phenomenon, it is it's not just the high-profile providers, mm -hmm. although Cleveland Clinic is certainly in the forefront of this, but it's literally every hospital uh, that wants to capture the direct-to-employer contracting opportunities yep. in their local region, maybe four to six hours away from where the company is located, as well as the, the higher-profile organizations and hospital systems that are all over the country. Uh, so I think there's the opportunity here for perhaps less-known institutions and hospital systems <clears throat> excuse me, to increase their market share by serving employers direct. Yep. And, 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 Laura, wouldn't you agree that a lot of this is advancing pretty rapidly because uh, we now have employers and their employees, you know, with their eyes up looking at alternative care solutions and how can they save money and still get very good care. So for the first and, – and, and we're going to have more of an accessibility challenge coming up too. So you, we've got a very – open-eyed, open-eared market right now with both the consumers who work for employers and employers themselves. And what is interesting about this is that the incentives uh, that they are building into their benefits programs are, are really remarkable because they're eliminating out-of-pocket expenses, mm -hmm. co-pays, deductibles for those people who are looking to take advantage of these opportunities that may not be around the corner. As an individual myself, an individual patient, you would want to go to the best place possible, even yeah. if it wasn't next door. I always uh, tell people when I do these presentations that I've done not only for the Institute but all over the country, that I was a, uh, I was a medical traveler 15 years ago myself when I didn't even know what medical travel <laughs> was all about. I had an acoustic neuroma. I live in uh, northern New Jersey, right near the best hospitals in New York and certainly best hospitals in New Jersey. And yet the institution that was best known for treating and the procedure for removing the acoustic neuroma was located in Los Angeles at the House Ear Clinic. Hmm. So at the, at the direction of my doctor, I traveled. That was about 15 years ago, yeah. and I was really glad that I did because I got a great outcome, and I had no problems where people who have gone to less experienced uh, hospitals had, had, didn't have such a great, great experience. So here we are looking, you know, here we are in 2015 looking at centers of excellence, centers of value that can deliver this to people, a better product, a better outcome, and a more reasonable cost. Now, 
it's a natural that the employers would be interested. Yeah, and, and, and I think you make a great point, too, that it's not just about cost. That's an important part of the equation. It's, it's about improved outcomes a lot of times, too. Well, when you have an improved outcome and you don't have rehospitalization and you don't have revisions to surgery and, and less infection, uh, your costs are going to go way down yeah, just, as, just as a result of that. Okay. Now, Laura, when you, uh, when you look out there, you know, what employers are, are adopting domestic uh, travel and, and what are, which ones are kind of poised to, to do that into the new year? We have seen a tremendous uptake in the last two or three years among the larger employers. Obviously, the Walmarts, uh, Lowe's, those have gotten a lot of uh, headlines. Now we have JetBlue coming on, uh, McKesson. The larger employers have taken advantage of it because they could leverage large groups and they have millions of employees. So through the Pacific Business Group on Health primarily has directed those programs for some of the nation's largest employers, and Walmart is one of them, and the ones, all the ones that I mentioned. But what I think is even more exciting going forward is that we're going to see smaller employers, um, the, mid, the mid-market, the uh, 5,000 or so employees, and even smaller, even the smaller employers that are aggregating their, their groups together to you know, to be more active in this space, the alliance in Wisconsin, for example, is an employer purchasing organization yeah, yeah, yeah. that is bringing together its employers to to take advantage of negotiating these contracts directly with the hospitals. And I think that's where the market is going. We're going to see more large employers coming on board, and then we're going to see this mid market growing tremendously. So it's it's a question of this whole movement toward narrower networks Mm -hmm. because it kind of fits in with that but in narrowing the network you're actually giving the patients and the individuals more more opportunity for better outcomes so it's not a question of narrow networks just being cost driven they're quality driven and i would think every person would want to go to the best place that they can possibly get to to have their procedure and their treatment performed now laura on that um you know to expand on that point, there, what what type of procedures, um, you know, can be can be offered to the employee consumer who chooses to travel domestically? Right now, we're seeing the most activity in joint replacement, mm-hmm. spinal surgeries, cardiac procedures, a variety of cardiac procedures, not non emergency cardiac procedures really. But those are the ones and transplants. So those are the areas that are most um, most active. But, and, I, and that's a big but, we are seeing now bundled pricing coming into play for a lot of other procedures and the employers are looking at that opportunity as well, such as bariatric or weight loss surgery because they're now recognizing that that's an opportunity to mitigate or, or reverse diabetes. We're going to see it for urology. We're definitely seeing it in oncology. There's going to be bundled pricing in 2015 for oncology procedures as well. Um, I should point out that a lot of the uh, benefits of, of these travel surgery programs is in population management because what happens is the patients arrive sometimes, they've been diagnosed, let's say, to have spinal surgery, and they arrive at the hospital and it turns out that they don't need spinal surgery or that they have a comorbidity that is going to mitigate the need for the surgery or the, the appropriateness of surgery. So sometimes they're canceled. And as much as 50% of the spinal surgery has been deemed not appropriate, I think it's around 30% on the joint replacement and less on cardiac, but that has proven to be a very interesting phenomenon that's grown out of this travel surgery uh, program. Now, Laura, we got about a minute left on the program. Kind of, you know, leave our audience with, uh, you know, some one or two good takeaways on what they need to really consider when they're looking at uh, domestic medical travel. Number one, they have to look at the needs of their employees. What, where are they um, having high-cost procedures and where can they be of the most help? They need to contract with the right centers of excellence. I cannot um, emphasize that enough. You need to look at what's out there, what kinds of programs. They may not be in your backyard, but what kinds of programs are out there that are going to deliver the quality and make sure that those hospitals and systems are vetted appropriately and the physicians for their outcomes. And number three, at look at the opportunities for the pull-through with your employees. And there's going to be a lot of ways that employers can drive the, their 
their workforces to these centers of excellence and really benefit from the quality and the cost and the outcomes. So those are the three things to look at, and there are lots of groups, and we've been involved with a lot of these groups to help employers in that area, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to discuss that with any of the groups that want to look into this. Hey, Laura, we really appreciate you joining us on the program today, and, and thank you for all your support of the Institute. Laura is um, you know, one of the thought leaders out there in, in the industry, so do contact her if you're interested in uh, domestic medical travel. And to everybody, uh, Laura, you included, have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you next week on Healthcare Consumerism Radio. Well, thanks so much for the opportunity. Thanks, Laura.